Good morning and welcome as we meet to share together in our Harvest Thanksgiving celebration. Welcome to you here in the church and to anyone else who may be sharing with us wherever you might be. You are all very welcome indeed. The psalmist encourages us with these words. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. The land, it yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will be in awe of him. We listen as Peter plays for us an organ fanfare based on the well-known harvest hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter.
We pray together. Let us all pray. Today is a day for celebration, a day for shouting thank you at the tops of our voices. Thank you to God for all the good things that are ours to enjoy, and most especially for the harvest, the food we have to eat, for that which feeds us every day, that which nourishes us, a balanced diet by which we have all the nutrients necessary for a healthy lifestyle. And thank you to everyone else who contributed to make it possible for us to eat as well as we do. For farmers and growers, for pickers and packers, transporters, wholesalers and retailers, warehouse personnel, shelf stackers, checkout staff, van drivers, and especially all those who have continued working throughout these difficult times to keep the shops open for us and to deliver food to our doorstep. We say thank you. On this Harvest Thanksgiving Day, we give you our thanks. But there is so much more for which we ought to say thank you, beyond the immediate physical trappings of life. We say thank you to God for family and for friends, for home and for church, and for each other. And most of all, we give thanks to God for sharing our life with us in Jesus, for sharing our everyday lives with us in and through the Holy Spirit. We say thank you to a God who has proven always and forever to be faithful. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now David is going to come and read for us. Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a prominent and well-to-do member of Elimelech's family. His name was Boaz. One day, Ruth, the Moabite, asked Naomi, may I go to the harvest fields and glean behind anyone who will allow me? Yes, go, my daughter, she replied. So Ruth went gleaning in the fields behind the reapers. As it happens, she was in that strip of the fields which belonged to Boaz of Elimelech's family. And there was Boaz himself coming out from Bethlehem. He greeted the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they responded, the Lord bless you. Whose girl is this? He asked the servant in charge of the reapers. The servant answered, she is a Moabite girl who has come back with Naomi from Moab. She asked if she might glean gathering among the sheaves behind the reapers. She came and has been on her feet from morning till now. She's hardly had a moment's rest in the shelter. Boaz said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in any other field. Do not look any farther, but stay close to my servant girls. Watch where the men reap and follow the gleaners. I've told the men not to molest you, Any time you are thirsty, go and drink from the jars they have filled. She bowed to the ground and said, Why are you so kind as to take notice of me when I am just a foreigner? Boaz answered, I've been told the whole story of what you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you left father and mother and homeland and came among a people you did not know before. 
the Lord reward you for what you have done. May you be richly repaid by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. She said, I hope you will continue to be pleased with me, sir, for you have eased my mind by speaking kindly to me, though I'm not one of your slave girls. And now we listen to the first of our hymns, the words of which you have printed on the reverse of the order of service. Great is thy faithfulness.
Now Claudia is going to bring our second reading. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he heaped up for her some parched grain. She ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she got up to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, Let her glean even among the standing sheaves and do not reproach her. You must also pull out some handfuls for her from the bundles and leave them for her to glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephod of barley. She picked it up and came into the town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom he had, she had worked and said, The main name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. Then Ruth the Moabit said, He even said to me, Stay close by my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is better, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, otherwise you might be bothered in another field. So she stayed close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Now the second of our hymns, give thanks with a grateful heart. In a moment, we're going to share in a harvest communion. 
But before then, we're going to do something that we've never done before. Circumstances are strange and create for us opportunities. Today, we're going to receive someone into membership in their absence. There is a story, and it deserves to be told. Reverend Michael Lay was for many years minister at Trinity Mill Hill. And during that time, he offered his services to the church here, and they were gratefully received. Following the sudden death of the Reverend Peter Barraclough, Michael became the interim moderator of the church here and was responsible, along with the elders and congregation at the time, of securing the Reverend Tony Spring as Peter's successor. Following Michael's retirement from Mill Hill, he, together with his wife Enid, became members here and attended regularly. But following Enid's death and Michael still living in Mill Hill, together with his son, daughter-in-law and granddaughter, who at that time were attending St. Paul's Anglican Church in Mill Hill, Michael thought it best to worship alongside his family and nearer to home. So he did the appropriate thing and he resigned his membership from the church here and played his part in the life of the church in Mill Hill. More recently, Michael, due to age and infirmity, has found it necessary to go into a nursing home and is presently in the Henry Nyhill Nursing Home in Mill Hill and is not able to leave there. Even if circumstances were better, it wouldn't be possible for him. And whilst in the nursing home there, he's, in his own words, realised he needs to come home to rediscover his roots. He wants to belong. He was raised as a Congregationalist and served in many churches up and down the country as that, then latterly within the United Reformed Church. So he contacted me and said, will you have me back? So we thought long and hard and we wondered whether it would be appropriate. No, we didn't. We took very little time. We were very pleased to say yes. We're hoping that technology is allowing Michael to share these moments with us whilst in the home at Edgware. And it is with great pleasure that as a congregation, we want to welcome Michael back into the membership of this church. So the right hand of fellowship is not able to be shook, but it's able to be waved in the hope that he might be waving back. And um, in that way, we are joined one with another. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the way you work in the lives of your people. You call us, you take us here, there and everywhere. Your service is open-ended and those who are so called commit themselves to it. We thank you for Michael's response to your call to him in ministry and his being willing to go wherever you wished him to go. We thank you for fruitful ministry across the years. We pray your blessing upon him now. May he have a sense of peace and heart and mind. May he have that sense of having come home and of once again belonging. To that end, O oh God, we commend him to you now and the fellowship we will share, this mysterious fellowship of prayer which knows nothing of space and time but joins us one with another. In that spirit, O oh God, and in the name of Jesus, we are pleased to welcome him into the membership of this church. Let him accordingly, we pray, and do this for Jesus' sake. Amen. And so we come to share in our harvest communion. We heard earlier readings from the book of Ruth 
and there's a sense in which those readings should be allowed to speak for themselves. It's a harvest love story, and it's good to hear it. But as particularly David was reading, one thing struck me which I felt couldn't go unnoticed. It was the fact that Ruth was a Moabite, a foreigner. She'd come from a foreign land to work in the fields. And it says, quite matter-of-factly, morning till night. A foreigner in the fields working morning till night to ensure that the harvest was brought in. Over the years, we in this country have relied on whom we describe as foreigners coming to help us with the harvest being prepared to do that back-breaking work that perhaps we might fight shy of, being prepared to live in cramped conditions, working all the daylight hours that they can, just so that we can enjoy an efficient harvest. And yes, the money she raised was being used to support a family back home. And that's true also of many of those who come to serve us in this way. We are grateful for those who are prepared to do for us so often what we are not prepared to do for ourselves. But every cloud had its silver lining. And for Ruth, that silver lining was the romance that she was able to enjoy. And we thank God for that. But when we come to the Lord's table, we have represented for us, in a way, what we might describe as a harvest of love. It reminds us that in and through Jesus' death and resurrection, God has done what is necessary and sufficient to ensure that all who would put their faith and trust in him are welcomed into God's presence. Jesus, on one occasion, spoke of a seed thrown into the ground to die, but from it grows a tree so large that even birds are able to build nests in its branches. And so it is with the history of Christian witness across the centuries as it were, a seed thrown into the ground to die. Jesus' death on the cross, consequent upon which a tree so large, birds can build nests in its branches, a population that has spread throughout the world of women and men who have put their faith and trust in him. And this communion is given to us as a means by which we, even though we are few in this building, may be joined with those many others who do as we would do in like manner, acknowledging the fact that we are of one, branches of the same tree, grown from that seed thrown into the ground to die. The fellowship, the communion, which is of the saints, and for which we thanks to God. And so as we come around this table, all are welcome here. There is a sense in which, as we share communion, all are safely gathered in. The Apostle Paul reminds us how it was that this communion came to be instituted. It follows that anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup, I'm sorry, for the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death 
of the Lord until he comes. As then, so now, we give thanks to God for what is set before us on the table. We give thanks to God for this bread and for this wine. And on this Harvest Sunday, we acknowledge them for what they are, the fruit of the earth, the fruit of the vine, evidence of God's ongoing provision for each one of us, harvested on our behalf that we might enjoy both the eating and the drinking. But let us give thanks also for the one who is represented to us in these elements, the broken body and the shed blood of our Lord Jesus. We give thanks to God for an expression of love which is beyond our comprehending, even beyond our imagining. As surely as Jesus was prepared to humble himself even unto death, death on a cross, so we too are humbled before God in knowing ourselves to be loved in this way. We thank God for that sense of our having been safely gathered in, of our having been accounted as righteous in God's sight, of our having been invited into God's presence, where what awaits us is fullness of joy. Bless this time of sharing, we pray, as surely as on this harvest tide, we acknowledge the blessings that are ours to share each and every day. Thank you, O God, for your inexpressible gift. Amen. After giving thanks to God, he took the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. Each one of us should have available to us bread and wine. And as is our custom, we eat the bread immediately we are served. That is, just take the bread and eat it. And in the quietness, remember the privilege that each of us has, a personal relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if for any reason you don't have bread or wine immediately available to you, just put up your hand and someone will bring it to you. But otherwise, we eat of the bread. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in memory of me. And again, as is our custom, we drink to, with, alongside each other, reminded that we are indeed all one in Christ Jesus. So please take hold of the little glasses, and then when we are ready, we drink together. And we listen to the third of our hymns, Come, ye thankful people, come.
and we make our prayerful response. And on this Harvest Sunday, we pray in particular for everyone involved in the production of food to eat, especially mindful of those for whom these are difficult times in terms of security of employment and of economic well-being and of changing weather patterns. We pray too as people who have more than enough to eat for those who, for whatever reason, are not so fortunate. For all who go to bed each night hungry and malnourished. For all whose general health and well-being is blighted by a diet that is at best unbalanced. Let us pray too for those suffering from eating disorders, consequent upon a breakdown of their mental health and well-being and for all whose general mental health is being adversely affected by the present situation under which we all have to live. And we pray for one another, our own personal circumstances, and for our church and our wider fellowship, that we would continue to be supportive of each other in every way possible. Amen. And now we listen as Peter plays for us the voluntary.
And so our worship draws to its close. Say a very big thank you for the very kind donations of food that we see displayed at the front of the church and which will be delivered during this week to Homeless Action in Barnet. Thank you for your generosity in that respect and also to all who've made this morning's service possible, particularly the opportunity to share communion in the way we did. Obviously, we are living in difficult times. Rules and regulations change almost without warning. So please keep alert, stay safe, and keep well. And that is all we can ask of each other. We will be here again next Sunday, God willing, and government willing, at 11 o'clock. We hear these words of the Apostle Paul as he sends us out. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of us should give what we have decided in our heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless us abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that we need, we will abound in every good work. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase our store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of our righteousness. Amen.